Good morning, everyone. How are you all? Hope you're having a wonderful day. Um, I'm so glad to be here today taking you through today's topic of the webinar. I am Dina Hasseini, Head in Client Relations and the Influence Team here at Scylla. And uh, I'll be taking you through an intro on exactly what we do and how we utilize Scylla's powers to help brands with influencer marketing. I'm not going to take you through the dashboard. There has been a previous webinar taking you through the Influencer Hub on Scylla Platform 2.0. Please do um, go through it if you haven't already. It will take you through the different dashboards for creator profiles and as well for the campaign tracker. But we'll be referring to it a lot in today's uh, uh, topic, in today's webinar. Please as well, if you have any questions at any point during this webinar, do write them in the chat. And then at the end of the session, we can have a Q&A uh, time slot. And if you want, please feel free as well to just unmute yourself and we can have a discussion. I would absolutely love that. All right, let us start. I'll share my screen now. Now, I'm assuming that most probably you're familiar with what we do. Uh, I think some of you are our current clients and others were in uh, very pleasant conversations with. But in case you don't, I'll just give you a very brief uh, background. Scylla uses its own uh, AI tool, AI platform. It's based on Arabic native natural language processing or AI basically, that helps us understand the different dialects of Arabic, which are 21 plus. This essentially helps us in everything that we do from research to studies, to influencer marketing, to understanding consumers in general. And this is how we help brands no matter the service that we are providing. Now, for today's topic and influence powered by Scylla, I'll take you through how we utilize AI's powers to give and provide transparency and complete visibility to our client partners before they go about doing their influencer campaigns. We'll go through everything, the entire process. I'll uh, show you how we do things around and uh, what we do using Scylla and beyond that as well. Now let's start. Basically, utilizing Scylla's AI allows us to understand the consumers, understand what they are interested in, what they're talking about, what their sentiment and their perception of the brand is. It allows us to understand the share of voice of the brands, know exactly where it stands, um, and help them let the uh, messaging be concise and very relevant in order to shape or mold the audiences or the consumers' decisions. So in this way, you'll be able to actually provide content and campaigns that are on point to answer your main objective or your own challenge or the purpose why you're actually investing in influencer campaigns, whether that be to increase or drive sales or drive footfall into the store or download an application or you know, change your consumption behavior, use a product in a specific way rather than another, et cetera. You can use and leverage the power of AI to do different things. Now, for the sake of influencer campaigns, uh, it's safe to say, for starters, that everyone is now investing so much more money into influence other than you know, the other uh, digital, uh, digital efforts, basically. Before, a lot of brands used to invest so much more into TV, into billboards, into, you know, uh, above the line, below the line, and then it became all social media. Uh, they used to invest so much in their content, you know, creating videos, long form, short form, static albums and carousels. And then now they're putting so much more weightage of their marketing budgets into influencer campaigns. We know some of our clients even don't um, have a 
perfect balance between their own organic social media efforts and influencer marketing. They're putting more and more focus into influencer marketing. I would advise you to always have a balance because even if you are utilizing influencers and you are reaching your goals, it doesn't tie back into in, in a healthy way back to your brand on social. Your audience still needs to be able to talk to you. You still need to grow your own community not through a third party, not through just an influencer, but also for your brand internally. However, influencers are doing a fantastic job. Uh, whatever you want your brand to achieve, whatever you want you know, your products to reach, whatever messaging you want to convey, influencers can do it all. They're not just content creators. They really, truly influence people, but not all the time. It's super, super important, as vitally important as, you know, just upping your game by using influencer marketing. It's just as important to use the right ones, because if you don't use the right ones, if you don't use the right messaging, then you've just invested in an inefficient um, campaign or effort. How do you use or how do you reach the right influencers? You can do that ultimately using data and insights. It tells you everything. You're able to truly benefit from every single pound you're putting in as an investment. How we do that, we'll go through in details very, very shortly. But as a, a, a brief uh, intro, we work, we help brands work with influencers from all different sizes of followers, uh, from all different categories, um, whether they're food related, because currently a lot of our clients are from the FN, FNB industry, but also way beyond that. So a lot of tech creators, a lot of lifestyle, a lot of travel creators and influencers, um, health, fitness, uh, dietitians, even parenting, comedy, which brings a lot of uh, humor, but also the right messaging when uh, rightly fit. Now let's go through how we can help you or help our partners um, into achieving an optimum result using influencer campaigns. For starters, we use what we call the audience first method. Audience sits at the forefront of every strategy that we work on. And it's the ultimate goal, right? To reach your audience, your target audience in a perfectly clear way, communicate with them, bond with them and create and grow your community because they're your consumers. They're your customers. They are I ultimately what makes or breaks a brand. So we need to understand them. We need to put them at the core of our strategy, whatever it is. We need to grow them. We need to build this community. And this is how we tap into it when it comes to influencer marketing. Even when we're choosing influencers, we first look at their audience, their demographics, their affinities, who else they follow, who they interact with, who they love, who, who they have negative sentiment about. This is the core. And this is what really, really helps us determine whether this content creator or influencer is right for this campaign or if they're not. Now, this is our process uh, overall. This is what we do in a nutshell. First of all, we utilize Scylla in our influencer selection process and to look at their KPIs as well. We do that using different metrics. We look at the influencer's numbers and I'd like to stop here for a little bit. Um, going back to something that I mentioned at the beginning, that number of followers is not everything. Sometimes clients come, come up to us and they say, I want the biggest creators. But really, it's not about that at all. It really depends on your objective. It depends on what you are looking for. Are you looking for reach? Do you just want to reach as many people as possible? Maybe there's a new launch. 
and your product is something that anyone could uh, use. Maybe it's water, for example. Uh, maybe it's just juice. Um, you don't necessarily have a specific niche target audience. So you just want to convey the message and let everyone know that there's a new product in the market and they should know about it and try it out. But also maybe it's very, very niche. Currently, we're actually working on something with one of our beloved uh, clients, and it's a very niche product um, for coffee lovers. I'm not going to say more about that at this at this point, but let me just tell you that. So for that, we're not looking at macro creators at all. We actually don't care if they have even 50K followers. We're looking at micro creators because we know that they have the right audience that we want to reach, even if they're only 15,000 followers, even if they're only 10,000 followers. But if the content is very specific, if the content is all, for example, about coffee, then I know that these 10,000 people following this influencer are truly influenced and they love the content that they are doing. So I'm going for them. I don't care if 10,000 people saw my, my content, but they're not coffee lovers and they wouldn't be interested in my product. But I would really care if it was 10K only who are truly interested in this topic at hand and this product in specific would see this content and be influenced and be intrigued and, and want to actually go to the store and buy my product. So it's not just the number of followers, it's so much more, but this is just one of the factors that we need to look into. Other factors are the KPIs, the estimated averages. Scylla looks at the past three months um, of uh, every creator's or every, every influencer's uh, performance when it comes to organic and when it comes to paid as well. It's important to look into both when you are evaluating an influencer. Um, and these are just some of the factors, metrics like video views, like the active reach, like the likes, interactions, comments, which is a very high quality form of interaction. And then the second step is we do influencer management. So once we've selected uh, the influencers and looked at their KPIs and we've decided that they're a good mix for this sort of campaign, we take care of all the management process, whether it's contracting or briefing them about the campaign, getting approvals on the content, guiding them into how what they say uh, on the main piece of content or on stories across the different platforms, making sure uh, the posting is all sorted out properly, hashtags and all of that. And then we also do a performance life tracker. And this is something that you've seen in the previous webinar on the dashboard. This helps us, especially when it's a long-term campaign, if it's an always-on campaign, for example, or if you have different bursts across the year, let's say we're doing it on a monthly basis, one or two creators per month or more, or if we have a Ramadan burst and then a Eid burst and then a back to school burst and then a Christmas one, then it becomes very, very important to monitor the performance of the campaign across the timeline to see who's performing okay, who's performing way less. Right now, there's a lot going on in the world and it's truly greatly affecting everything it's affecting all the campaigns it's affecting a lot of the creators performances so it's important to be aware of what's going on and take the right measures um, and be timely in doing so just yesterday actually um, an upcoming campaign from one of our clients got cancelled and it was a fantastic decision uh, taken in a very short uh, amount of time and didn't take, you know, forever and, you know, the hierarchy bureaucracy and taking forever to take such a decision. We know what's going on. We know the messaging is not right at such a time. That's cancel. If we went ahead with this campaign, it could have harmed the brand image even further. So sometimes we need to take tough decisions, but think of the overall big picture. 
And then last thing that we do is reporting uh, based on, of course, data-driven insights. Um, and I'll show you an example and I'll show you what sort of uh, graphs and numbers go into our reporting. It's truly the data that makes us uh, very, very unique from A to Z, basically. It helps us from the very beginning know what we want to do with the campaign, uh, what we should focus on, what we should highlight in the content. It helps us choose the influencers. It helps us evaluate and monitor the campaign while it's live and then it helps us uh, report in a very very uh, measurable and and detailed way we can go into details here let me show you some stuff and we can go through them so this is how we identify the creators through Sela. this is the dashboard that you've seen and and the previous webinar uh, just to go through it once more this is the trust score over here, it gives you an indication on how much of your or this influencer's audience is true, is real, versus fake profiles, versus bots, uh, versus inactive accounts with you know the zero followers, zero following, zero posts sort of thing. Um, and then over here, you see the basics, the username, the name, number of followers, the active reach, which is a super, super, super important um metric now in this specific example actually for uh salam chef salam actually um her active reach has decreased so much lately now chef salam's content in general over time we've seen is uh being received very very well by her audience she usually has amazing uh, interactions, amazing engagements, shares, saves, and these are very, very good indicators on the quality of the content, um, whether they're just recipes or the actual video or the tips that she puts in her in her uh, videos um, and comments as well. To me, honestly, if the likes are very few, but the comments and the sentiment of the comments is high, the shares, the saves, these are very good indicators um, that give proper and, and uh, insightful indication on the success of the piece of content. However, recently, we've seen that her active reach went down. And um, obviously, this affected her, her overall performance. It's still fantastic, but not... Um, relatively compared to her previous one or three months prior or six months prior even. Um, again, it's important that we look at the overall picture, listen, be aware of what's happening around and analyze why that might be. Her number, her number of followers did not change, but only the active reach, meaning who is actively seeing her content, the number of followers who are actively seeing this creator's or this influencer's content on their feed. If this goes down and the frequency of posting is the same, then it might be an algorithmic issue. And that is the case in, in this specific example whether it be through, you know, because of shadowing, because of posting specific things uh, that get hidden. Now, Instagram, for example, um, in Feb, they've done this feature in the settings um, and it's automatically turned on that you don't see political content um, and you have to actively go into settings and privacy and then you change that toggle uh, so you can actually see content. So if Chef Salam was, you know, posting something about what's happening in the world or in Palestine, then she gets shadowed, then you see less of her content by default. So it was important to analyze this to, in order to understand the changes in, in the metrics. And then over here, we see some audience insights, age and gender, uh, demographics. And then this is also super important, the country of audience, the split, because sometimes... A brand has presence in the region, but they're investing for a campaign locally. 
But it would be amazing if they had the spillover across the other markets that they're present in, no? So this is uh, pretty useful when we have a big campaign, for example, and we're you know working with creators just locally, but they have presence um, in regards to their audience across the other markets, or if we're working with influencers from different markets, so we can understand the scale of uh, influence that we're having across the region. Now, over here, we have very cool graphs that tells us a bigger picture story um, about the influencer's audience. And it takes us back to the strategy that we follow, which is audience first. This tells us the top audience affinities, meaning Chef Salam's audience follows who else? What other brands uh, do they follow? What other creators do they follow? This gives us indication on their interests, um, what they like, their preferences. And uh, if there are other brands, then it will give me an indication on whether my brand, I would be okay with my brand falling into a comparison with these other brands, whether they're competitors or they're not, ideally not competitors, so we can truly uh, put a placement of my brand and, and see if this is the image that I want to achieve. And then the top brand mentions will tell me about the creator, what other brands do they partner with, um, who do they tag in their content. And this will tell me basically if they're working with competitors or not, instead of doing a lot of stalking. This is how we profile creators when we are working on a proposal or a strategy. We put in a screenshot uh, from the dashboard of this uh, influencer. And then we put some relevant samples from their content, obviously hyperlinked as should be. And then we put a summary or a small description about this uh, specific influencer. And perhaps we've worked on them before for the same brand and uh, they've done well or they've done great. So we highlight that as well as a reminder. Now, this is an overview um, on a typical proposal that we work on. Uh, first of all, we debrief, just so you know that we understood your brief, um, highlight the important points, and then we sometimes include a section um, for insights and findings. Let's say, for example, we are working on a cheese a cheese product. Uh, so we look into the consumption of cheese. We look into whether people, for example, use it in cooking or in snacking. Um, how do they use the cheese? Do they spread it? Do they you know, dip in it? Um, do they like to eat it in the morning, breakfast? Or do they like to eat it in lunch, during lunch, etc.? cetera? Um, Sometimes we have a lot of those on hand because of the different studies and the research that we do. But other times, especially if it's a big brief um, and a big uh, proposal that we're working on, we uh, work internally to set up a specific dashboard just for the need. And, um, and this is where we include insights. And of course, the research team will help us with analysis. Based on this section, we work on the strategy. So based on the findings that we get from the insights from Scylla, we work on the job to be done, exactly what we need to achieve, the strategic goals of this campaign. And of course, it has to tie back to the original client brief, but then it will be you know, um, molded into how we're gonna do this or how we're gonna execute this on ground when it comes to influencers content. And then if it isn't there, we work on a creative concept uh, with all its details, with the tagline, with the hashtags and all sorts. And then we work on the platform strategy. Now, I also wanna stop here for a little bit and talk about the platform strategy. Just like social media, just like your organic content that you do for your own business, the best practice is to not 
copy paste the same piece of content across all the different social media platforms. Best practice is not to put the same post on Facebook, on Instagram, on uh, Twitter, on TikTok. They're completely different platforms and they have different audiences and different ways of consuming the content. So someone on TikTok is not gonna be interested in the same sort of content that someone on Instagram would be. Of course, that's not the case. It's not a generalization, but it's important to put this in mind when we are working on a strategy. It's also important to tie back to your target audience. Who is my audience and where do they spend the most time? Is it on Instagram or is it on TikTok or is it on YouTube, which is a very, very still popular platform, um, especially in KSA, for example. We've just done a survey about this recently. Um, so it's important and it's important to be aware of all the algorithmic updates that are happening because there are a lot. They happen all the time. Uh, it could change tomorrow uh, and after and after. So it's important to stay up to date um, and always adjust your strategy accordingly. Uh, we've seen this a lot before. Sometimes when Instagram first introduced Reels, stories were not performing well at all because they were putting all the focus on Reels and then they introduced the Explore page. Um, so it was taking a lot of uh, the, the 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 share of uh, reach, basically. And then now we see TikTok introducing a lot of their business solutions. So organic content uh, is getting boosted, but then they want you to boost the content uh, monetarily. Uh, and when you do, then the organic does not reach the same uh, uh, numbers of people that you used to. So it's always important to adjust and be aware so you can manage your expectations as well. If your content with the same influencer was doing fantastic in December of last year, but last month it did really, really bad or poorly or way less than it did before, you need to put a lot of the factors uh, in mind. You need to analyze the content itself, what was different, the messaging, the complexity of the content, the fact of whether it was organic or you boosted it somehow, the number of paid ads that the same influencer did during the, the periods of time, you need to look at the changes that the platform's been having. You, you need to look at, into the political situation and a uh, number of followers and the active reach. Really, there are a million factors that affect performance. And we look into all of these when we're reporting. And then we go into the content flow. Um, once we've uh, finalized uh, or came to a conclusion about which platforms we're going to be on, then we work on the content flow, um, main pieces of content, stories, what each is going to achieve in terms of objectives, etc. And then we go into the next section, the selection of influencers, the role, what are they going to be doing, um, which personas we're using, uh, and why. And then their scope of work, exactly how many pieces of content they're going to be doing across the different platforms. And then we're going to put the profiles, just like we showed you the example. And then the estimated results of the entire selection. What's the estimated reach? What's the estimated number of impressions and engagements, video views, the engagement rates, and all of that. And then if there is a part of the strategy, uh, PR, uh, activity that accompanies it or accompanies the creative concept, then we'll include this part as well, be it a kit or, you know, event coverage or a, a press release or a meet and greet, whatever it is. And then finally, we put the next steps and a timeline from contracting to approvals, to the uh, campaign going live, the duration of the campaign, and then when you'll be expecting the report.
Now this, again, you've seen before, it's the campaign tracker, and this will help us with the reporting. Um, key metrics will go at the beginning of the report, as it is on the dashboard. Uh, basic numbers, how many pieces of content, how many influencers we worked with, the total number of stories, the estimated uh, media value that you've gained through this campaign, and then all the engagements and the engagement rates and all of that. And then, of course, um, you'll see the changes over time. You'll be able to compare performances of the influencers. Uh, you'll see if... Uh, one of them had uh, a peak on any specific day. You'll see if weekends are performing better than weekdays. You'll see all these details. And then finally, we report on sentiment as well. And again, you'll be able to um, compare sentiment across the different creators. And what's interesting here is that we not only include positive and negative, as we do on Scylla in general, we don't just do positive and negative, we also do neutral and we do irrelevant. Irrelevant is super important, especially in this region, because there's a lot of noise, a lot of um, irrelevant and spam comments that usually come in. Uh, people trying to you know sell stuff on their pages, whatever it is. So it's important not to consider them when you're looking at the sentiment that your brand or the campaign or the piece of content is getting. We take these out and then we look into what's actually relevant, what people are saying about the piece of content, about the influencer doing this specific piece of content, not just an irrelevant comment about the influencer or content creator in general. And then maybe it's about the product, maybe it's about the recipe that they're using, maybe it's about the usage, um, maybe it's about how genuine the content is or fake. Again, this is something you need to pay attention to. And this will give you a better indication on the brand perception uh, from your audience. This section is for success stories. I'll just take you through uh, one for the sake of time, and then we can move on to the Q&As. These are some of the clients that uh, we proudly uh, support and partner with to help create a connection between them and their audiences and their consumers. Um, I'll go through one case study that happened in 2023. You'll need to wait till next year so I can take you through th something from 2024. Um, this was for Pook. They wanted to raise awareness about their full range of Labne, which um, which varies in flavors really. And they had new flavors coming in the market as well. And they had other competitors that do the same type of Turkish labne. Um, so they wanted to boost the sales and they wanted to create awareness and let people know about the different flavors that they have and also continue hammering on their plain SKU. Now we worked on this campaign with um, 11 creators actually across two different platforms, Instagram and TikTok. We had cooking and we had lifestyle creators due to the nature of the product itself. You don't need to be a professional cook. You don't need to be you know, a fantastic mom uh, to be able to use this uh, specific product. It's easily spreadable. Uh, it's very easy so you can dip in it sticks or bread or whatever you're into. Um, this campaign did fantastic. The content was very, very genuine, very simple. We made it seem like they were going through a stressful day, for example, and then last minute, the product turned their day around and uh, just you know dipping it or spreading it on a snack and then having it or indulging in it made their day so much better. This campaign did a fantastic. It was across one month in terms of timeline. One of the pieces of content went viral 
it was by Afnan recipes and the engagements and the actions that were taken were 9.4 million we reached 12 million people and the engagement rate was very high relatively it was 78 percent which is a fantastic engagement rate um, I'll stop here but if you're interested to see more of the case studies, then I can definitely share with you um, the deck later on. But I would really love to know if you have any questions or any comments uh, or things that you want to discuss. There are two questions. Uh, first one coming from Ashraq. Um, we still haven't met in person, Ashraq, but I'm looking forward to that. It says, I would like to know more about the more effective influencers in KSA. Well, that is a quite uh, a big question, Ashraq. <laughs> it's, uh, it really depends on so many things. What do you mean by more effective in terms of what, which industry, what type of, you know, the persona of the creators? We use different metrics like we've discussed today just to see the engagements, which is really important. We need to look at the sentiment uh, that they're receiving because you can say effective in terms of reach, that they're reaching a very wide audience. But then if you dig deep, maybe the sentiment that they're getting is uh, mainly negative or neutral. So that's not very helpful, is it? But then um, the opposite is true. Maybe they're reaching a medium number of people and the sentiment is very relevant and very positive. And this is happening in one of our current campaigns, actually. We're receiving, so we had one creator actually use an appliance from one of our um, partners, client partners, and she used it in one of her content pieces. And then she started receiving not only comments, but direct messages. People were sending her messages, asking about this appliance and engaging in conversation with her. Of course, she did the same and she was going back and forth. She shared these insights with us. We did another piece of content on the same appliance and the comments were very, very truly relevant and insightful. And now she's gonna be a brand ambassador for this brand because this is how effective her um, her content is and her presence is with her audience. Um, I would love to give you a more specific answer. So please do let me know exactly what you're looking for and we can discuss. Now, there is another question. How can you measure the impact of Snapchat influencers who don't share their numbers or insights? You can't. <laughs> truth be told you can never measure anything without numbers or insights they would not be measurable right and snapchat is a private thing you don't see comments you don't see public uh interactions uh so you wouldn't really be able to know how successful the piece of content was so you need to know the insights you need to know the numbers uh averages in general and then for your campaign in order to, to truly measure against the, the estimated or you know the averages of the specific uh, influencer. All right. It was an absolute pleasure um, hosting this webinar today. Please do reach out to us if there are any questions that you have. And if you're interested in the presentation that we went through, and we'll definitely share that with you. Looking forward to discussing more with you in the future. Also, please, please, I'd really appreciate it if you have any specific topics that you would like us to tackle in the next webinar. Thank you and have a fantastic day ahead. Bye-bye.